I wrestled in the upper Midwest for several years. I trained there too, so I knew just about everybody on the scene. But not everybody. Some some guys came from up north. Some guys came from down south. And on uh, the night in, in particular, I was wrestling. I was booked against a guy from up north. And as we talked about the match, he was uh, jiggling his pecs at me, which was a little strange. But maybe it was uh, just kind of a habit for him because he was a bigger dude and, you know, had big pecs. Uh, maybe it was an intimidation thing because I had a bit of a reputation um, especially for my quote unquote stiff kicks. Um, so maybe he was just trying to, you know, let me know that he had big pecs. Um, anyway, we're going into our match. We have our match. Uh, it's pretty unmemorable, but we find our way to the outside and, uh, surprising me very much. And also the chair very much. He, uh, side slams me through a metal chair, uh, at ringside that nobody was sitting in. The chair and I go into a heap on the ground, and um, I'm laying there kind of thinking about what he's done. And this big dude, pretty big dude, I'd say he's about 250, uh, he climbs to the top rope. And I look up to see him jumping off for a double axe handle from the top rope onto the floor. And I decide uh, to kick him. And I kick him square in the face uh, as he's rocketing down towards me, and he lands in a heap of his own on the on the ground. And uh, his nose starts bleeding quite a bit. So uh, in some weird guttural kind of warrior uh, moment, I scoop up a bunch of his blood and I paint my initials on my chest in his blood. And I just scream my gimmick name out loud and everybody kind of looks at me like, what the hell is going on? And I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things that happened in the moment. And yeah, the rest of the match went pretty, again, unmemorably. Um, you know, I didn't hold the the side slam against him, and I don't think he was that pissed that I, I gave him some nose color. But, uh, you know, it just kind of goes to show that as much as people think that matches are scripted and uh, we know everything that's going to happen, sometimes you can't predict what's going to happen, and it's a little bit crazy. Got him with the nose color. Very Jerry Lynn of you, especially Upper Midwest where Jerry Lynn comes from, where this caller was wrestling at. I believe Jerry did that in ECW. He wrote die on his chest and you wrote your initials. I think my favorite part was him bouncing his boobs before the match because I feel I've done that. I feel all wrestlers have done that, but it took this caller for a little bit of a loop. Man, it seems like a war out there. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad he's okay. And yeah, there's always something different happening in wrestling. The plan is always changing. The script is always changing. And sometimes a wrestler bleeds so much blood that you have to scoop it up and then finger paint on your own body and then tell everyone, oh no, I did that on the call because that's how my brain works. Yes, that's how a wrestler's brain works. Maybe not yours at home, but a wrestler brain works that way 100%. I would have done the exact same thing. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. That call was part of a whole podcast called Wrestling Anonymous. Listen to the whole thing weekly wherever you listen to your podcast. Go subscribe. And while you're at it, subscribe right here on YouTube to Colt Cabana's channel. Thank you.